That's an ideal world. If I was given the option, wine list for sure. So it is a wine and should be enjoyed as a wine. Uh, I'll, I'll start by saying hi to sellers.asia friends, community, hello, ciao, ciao. <laughs> hello. hola, as we say in Portugal. Can you tell us something about your um, business, your port and how it's performing in Asia? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, well, my name is uh, Jorge Nunes. Um, I'm a winemaker by background. I do Asia Pacific um, for a company called Simington Family Estates, which is the, you could say, it's a, the, the leading premium uh, port and Dodo, which is the, the region, and Dodo producer um, in, in the world. Uh, port is a bit like Champagne, it's a protected wine appellation, so we are the leading port producer in that particular region, and so we can say we're the most important port producer in the world. Um, and Asia is a business which is small, to be honest. Um, it's, it's still um, definitely growing, definitely very, very interesting. Um, and but within the the port world, um, we're still far from what Europe, what the U.S., Canada, uh, Eastern Europe, for example, are doing. Um, but growing, and it's an exciting part of the world to be a part of. Is more because it's a sweet wine, a fortified wine, or is more uh, because of the price issue? I don't think so. Or uh, it's a good question. I think it's more about the, 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 knowledge, the knowledge of the category. Um, I think this, the fact that they were naturally sweet wine, it, it, in a way it works against us because people don't tend to look at us as something that they drink, they would drink every day. Like, you know, I like you would drink a sparkling, a white or a red. But, but I also think it's a big advantage because a sweet wine, everyone likes it. It's what we, every time we, someone who had never tasted port before, if we pour a glass and go, try it, 99.9% .9 of people go, oh wow, I like this. Because it's smooth, it's soft, it's round, it's yummy, it's again, naturally rich, sweet. There's nothing not to like. It's a bit like, I always compare with chocolate. There are a few people that don't like chocolate, but most people like chocolate, so it's a bit the same. Uh, but I think it's just the, the knowledge behind it, um, which doesn't help the consumer to see port on the list and go, I want to try that, or port on the shelf and go, am I going to like it? Should I buy it? So there's a lot of the work that the company is, in, is investing on in Asia is education, 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 uh, and trying to open as many bottles of port as possible and sample with, it. <coughs> Sorry. with as many consumers as possible. I have a question uh, that maybe will benefit uh, our professional friends which are following uh, uh, our blog. Um, would you recommend to put uh, the port category under a wine list or under a drink list? Very good question again, Toto. It's, um, we are, in the way that we're made, a majority wine. So about 80% of what we are comes from grapes, fermented grapes as a wine. And then we have 20% of what we're made of, a spirit, a high alcohol spirit, which actually is also grape origin because we're talking about wine distilled into spirit. So everything is obviously grape origin, but we are majority wine, but partially spirit. And so we are a little higher alcohol, 20% alcohol. And because of that, we're, we're, unfortunately, a lot of people look at us as a liqueur and not as a wine. Mm -hmm. And so because we're seen as a liqueur, you immediately think liqueurs, that's bar list next to gin and vodka and whiskey and other stuff. Um, and they forget that actually the majority of what we are is wine. And so the way I see it, in an ideal world, we would be on both because it's a great dessert wine, a great after-dinner wine. It actually works very well as an aperitif wine, but it's also a great bar, lounge, relaxing wine as well. But that's an ideal world. If I was given the option, wine list for sure. So it is a wine and should be enjoyed as a wine. And if I may continue here, Toto, because it, it, everything is about 
perception. Uh, historically, if you will go to a bar and you ask for a port or a sherry, which is also a fortified wine, um, like we are, a different one, but similar family, you are usually served in a liqueur glass, which is a tiny little thing, which is not the right glass, because you can't swirl the glass, you can't enjoy all the flavors that these wines have. And so, again, it's the perception of these wines port as a liqueur, when they should be enjoyed as a wine, in a proper wine glass, where you can actually enjoy it. So, there's a, there's a lot of work to do in that area, um, trying to convince the trade, the hotels, the restaurants, and of course, people at home, to get rid of those tiny glasses mm -hmm. and actually enjoy ports as the great wines that they are. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, what is uh, maybe a selling point? Why should I always have a bottle of uh, port in my fridge? I have a reason. And my reason is that when I open a bottle of port, I put it in the fridge, can sit there for months, years probably. Right? Is this a good setting point? What Absolutely. Absolutely, Toto. That, that is one of the key things um, about port. The fact that it's a uh, fortified wine. And fortified means strengthened. Mm -hmm. So because of the spirit that we add it. Mm -hmm. So the wine is 20% alcohol, naturally rich and sweet. So once, oh, and most of it has been barrel aged for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Some of our wines are 10 years, 20, 30, 40 years spent in a barrel, mm -hmm. very much like a very old whiskey would do. Mm -hmm. So once you open, it's fine. The wine is not going to lose quality. So it actually has a, uh, what we call a tea top. So it's like a, a cork, mm -hmm. which you would see in cognac and whiskey, open, close, open, close. So it's very practical. It's just open, serve, close, put in your fridge, very good. And then you know, if you don't feel like another glass of port for a week, go back to it and the, the following week, absolutely fine. The wine is perfect. And so it's a great wine to, it's a, it's a wine, again, a great wine, but you can enjoy it as a spirit. Like your bottle of whiskey that you have in your corner and once in a while you go there and sure. same thing. Sure. So that is definitely a, a good selling point. Mm -hmm. And from the fridge, you also serve it chilled, which is what I would recommend. Historically, port was served in room temperature, which is usually associated to Portugal or England in the winter, mm -hmm. when it's really cold. Mm. We are doing this in Bangkok, yeah. where it's never cold. It never, it never is below, what, 20 degrees or something. So you, get, you have to adapt. And actually, we, we learned that if you serve a port really chilled, it's a magnificent thing to enjoy. Better than at room temperature. I now keep serve all my ports chilled. And I've learned that because of the work that I've done in uh, Southeast Asia and in sort of tropical, subtropical countries, because I've learned that actually chilled, it's lighter, easier, uh, more relaxing. Yeah. What is your main market in Asia? Um, in Asia would be, um, well, Singapore would be the main market, and for many reasons, not just because it works as a market on its own, but because it works as a very strong duty-free market as well. So, Shanghai Airport is a big customer of ours. Um, it supplies, and then through Singapore, we supply to Indonesia, to Malaysia, to Vietnam. So, if you would ask me the biggest domestic market, mm -hmm. I would probably say it is China now. It is China. It is already China. Um, it not uh, until about two three years ago it wasn't, uh, but recent developments have brought China to be, and, and I expect it to continue being uh, for a long time within the region. China will be the main market, um, but there isn't, perhaps compared to other categories, there isn't one market that has gone nuts and is way above everyone else. It's, it's a steady growth everywhere. Korea, really cool. We're really excited about Korea. Taiwan, very interesting. Um, Indonesia, very interesting. Um, Thailand, a bit smaller, but recent developments, so definitely on the right track. And if you look at Japan, which is the one that perhaps is a bit more disappointing, where we haven't really made... Um, uh, significant. Yeah, significant growth. Uh, but if you look at the whole region as a whole, it all, it, it all is growing. 
which is great. All right. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for this uh, short interview. Uh, would you like to say something to our Celeron.Asia uh, friends? I would, Toto, I would say thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you taking, you know, taking this step forward in, in, a, in a very experienced career that you have. It's really cool. Um, and um, I'm very proud to be the first speaker. <laughs> Let's see if the interview goes through. <laughs> um, and what I would say to the community um, of Celeron.Asia and friends um, is that uh, we, uh, as, a, as, a, as a major port producer, um, have really cool products to try um, in actually well, in, you know I know, I know your, your, your blog has many different languages so in all the markets you can find our ports uh, Graham's, Dow's, Wars, Coburn's ports um, and they are pretty well distributed so you can find it close to you I hope and next time you see it if you haven't tried it give it a try uh, it's, it's hard not to like it and if you are in your adventure to learn more about wines, and if you're in a path that you're curious about trying different things, then definitely port is one of them. It's one of the great historical wines in the world, definitely. and you should give it a shot. Definitely. So thank you. Grazie mille. Thank you very Obrigado. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.